pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So as we always do, and I always say we stand for a moment and honor those that are with us and those that are not in the armed forces. And if we could remember the following folks that have passed away um, from the community, Stephen Storms, Huck Davis, William Monahan, Chris Spellman, and Charlie's mother, Janet Brown. I'm sorry. Bigelow. Bigelow. I'm sorry. Okay. How's well, that big difference? Janet Bigelow. Okay, thank you. We want to welcome uh, Richie Sullivan, who's on the town board. Rich, welcome here. We have microphones finally. I think the folks at home can hear us now. Um, if not, call Mary Jane. Can I give you a number out? Um, I want to thank our audio visual consultant back there. He came one day and we worked on this. So thank you. Just give me a second. What is this? Mr. Sheboy, these aren't the school bills, are they? That you're giving us to pay? School bills? No. Okay. Let's <laughs> check Okay, Mr. Sheboy and other folks that you brought with us, um, I can get my papers straight while you uh, come up here and, and uh, tell us what you're here for. Absolutely. Okay. So I also would like to uh, thank Ms. Brand and Ms. Haberman and Dr. Taylor uh, for each of the village board members and Mr. Mayor. There's just a copy of the Raider Review, which is uh, a regular newsletter that gets put out. So if you're wondering what's going on at a meal, uh, that has a lot of information from the high school administration. Uh, anybody in the community can find that online. Uh, so again, there's a wealth of information going on uh, on our website at www.hf fmcsd.org. Uh, I'm pleased again to be able to come before the village board uh, just to talk a little bit about our budget and to, uh, just explain uh, what what it is, how we got to this process, and uh, take any questions that uh, the village board or Mr. Mayor you might have or anybody who may happen to be here. Uh, we started developing the 2018-19 uh, budget in the fall and taking our numbers. Uh, what we began with was what we would typically call a rollover budget. Uh, we did not have any idea as to what our revenue stream would look like, but we wanted to try to put together a budget that would preserve uh, our academic programs priced for the new year. Uh, the current uh, proposed budget is $30,606,772, and that does maintain our academic programs. It represents an increase budget to budget of 2.85% and a tax levy increase of 2.39% which is at the tax cap. It is not above. It is at the tax cap. It represents a budget-to-budget -budget increase of $847,764. The main drivers of this budget increase, um, and there's really three of them, which total about $700,000, are uh, rising health costs as every municipality and school district in uh, the nation is dealing uh, with escalation of health costs. Ours are expected to go up approximately 6% to uh, by $203,000. In addition, we have a requirement to educate students with special needs and we anticipate special education tuition costs to increase by about $300,000 over the 17-18 school year. Uh, and our contracted transportation for many of our out-of-district placement students uh, is expected to increase approximately $206,000. As I've mentioned when I've been here before to this board, to the town board, to the school board, and, and to all the community groups, we have these unfunded mandates. New York State's requirements for special education are among the highest in the country. If you take those three drivers out, just those three, 
our budget to budget increase is about $147,000 or less than a half of a percent. Those three drivers are increasing it by the other 2.4 percent. And I uh, just want to make sure that I'm clear on that. We do anticipate our impact aid will remain. Uh, it is uh, certainly something that we're mindful of and vigilant and Mr. Sullivan has been here and obviously Roxanne Donnery has been uh, down advocating for years and years with our, our congressional leaders and our Senate leaders and will continue to do so. Um, despite the fact that the president will zero it out pretty much every year, Congress does what's right, the Senate does what's right and has restored it. And like I said, we will continue to advocate for that. Uh, we do anticipate uh, applying $540,000 in appropriated fund balance or assigned fund balance uh, to decrease the uh, impact on our taxpayers. The estimated year-to-year -year tax increase for a typical house valued at $230,000 is $103.56 per year or $8.63 per month. Uh, again, our budget is, our revenue is at 2.39% increase in the tax levy, which is at the uh, tax levy increase. If for some reason the budget does not pass, uh, we would have to reduce $254,163 from our budget, and those would be decisions that would be made uh, with the board. So I mean, I'll take any questions from the board, Mr. Mayor, or anyone from the community. Um, how is our impact aid? You touched on it, but yeah. less, more? It is, it's been the same since about 2010. So. There was an increase in impact aid, um, about $3 million for our program over the past few years. We're budgeting that we're gonna get a slight increase, but the foundation payment will not change. It's just any money that's left over gets divided among all the 200 and some odd districts around the country that receive our uh, program 70002 aid. So we're anticipating that we might get a little bit more this year. So we did include that in our revenue stream. The whole program, not us, obviously. Thanks to your efforts. Okay, I've got to hit this one. Um, we in the village currently pay $40,000 in tax payments to the school for the, uh, the reservoir, Bog Meadow. Um, at one time, the school board countenanced the idea of at least sharing that, cutting it in half, because you stated that you've got a $30 million budget. $40,000 is a significant part of ours. And if the school could make a concession and at least share some of that burden, it would be greatly appreciated. So Charlie, I'll share that at the board. Obviously, <laughs> okay. I am not the Board of Education, but I will absolutely share that. Um, we have a meeting this Thursday, and I'll share that remark to the board. The question I have is, uh, the last time you were here, we were talking Safety. about all the enhancements that you were yes. going to put on the school, too. Yes. Uh, how are we with that? Are you still feeling comfortable that this isn't going to increase at all? Or uh, no, actually, we have been fortunate. We were able to use, you know, we're... we're we were in a pretty good year this year. We didn't use all of our utility money, so we were able to take some of our facilities money. We talked about hardening our entrances and putting um, a, a film over our, our windows. We're doing that this year's money. We, it's not gonna affect the budget. Uh, some other things that we were able to do with this year's money is actually increasing some of our cameras and our telephony. And so we're not increasing the budget for next year because we were able to do it by saving fuel money okay. this year. And when you can do that, I mean, we were able to get those things lined up to do right away. We're replacing some doors, doors that are just not secure for our children. So we're, we're taking care of those enhancements now. new fields and all of that? That is not going to be reflected in any increase in this budget, not certainly. No. How about next year's budget? No, it shouldn't be because, again, we, we, we sold this, that this was going to have no increase in taxes. Okay. So. Okay. Good. So, yep. Great. Actually, actually, our capital debt as a percentage of the at a higher rate, the newer debt will be at a lower rate <coughs> for a longer period of time. So we're actually going to be saving money going forward with the, with the new project, right. believe it or not. So, Dr. Shibori, <laughs> yeah. would you elaborate on the other things that are coming in with uh, besides sports 
because when people meet me, they say, you know, we're going to get new fields. We're gonna get you mean the project? Like that. But you're going to do something with the science. Oh, absolutely. The, the science Can you labs. Elaborate on that. Yeah, absolutely. So the science labs are, are having an entire rehab. So our, our all of our, um, I'll use the term restrooms, I call them toilet rooms, but all of our restrooms will be made, brought up to ADA. But our science labs are going to reflect uh, teaching. And I think when I came here, probably in September, October, to, to even talk about that project. Um, I think Debbie was here. We, we talked about the fact that our science instruction is form follows function, if you think about it. And when we restructure these learning spaces, it gives our students an opportunity to collaborate differently. You know, we're not sitting in rows anymore just taking notes from the chalkboard that our teacher, our children are going to engage in real science, real exploration. So all of our science rooms, and, and our architects came and did a presentation about three weeks ago where they went over all the design elements. Uh, it gives us flexibility to change our program as well. You know, it, it's not just earth science or chemistry or uh, bio or physics, it's biochem. It's, you know, it's an integrated approach to science and our facilities will allow for that. So we will have the state of the art facilities in about a year and a half. architects that's open to the public at seven o'clock at the at the library at the high school and they're going to present us the uh, the site plans for the uh, for the fields on the outside the the outside lot, elements the lighting mm -hmm. and big improvement so that's very exciting and when is that tomorrow night. Sorry, tomorrow night mm -hmm. tomorrow night it's a special seven, meeting yes, open to the public mm -hmm. and you'll be meeting with us at the center right wednesday at one o'clock to talk about the budget are we doing that uh, yeah if it's on my calendar yeah i'm sure it's on there so okay yeah i'm just saying in case people want to yes. come Thank you. Again, hold on. Sure, so, Dr. Uh, uh just to get off of some of that subject, yes. I just want the public to know I gave uh, Dr. Shavoy um, some uh, information tonight. I spoke about it in the past uh, about Asthma Awareness Month. That's this month. Um, he's going to look into um, some of the programs that the Environmental Protection Agency has out there. That's our tax dollars. These are programs that can help to enhance. Uh, the school uh, heating and air conditioning system and uh, he's gonna look into that and anything that you find in here that you may feel uh, would be uh, a good addition to your flyer that you have out every month because it's not only uh, air quality in the schools mm -hmm. they have also air quality for residential sure. from this EPA website so if you can get that out to the school district absolutely and there's children, a, a webinar here that um, either it probably won't be me but probably tom fargo or somebody else from our uh, facilities i mean it's may 17th it's a webinar so somebody's going to make sure that they take part in that so Thank thanks you. for sharing that thank you thank you have a good day good night everyone uh, uh, sir, what you want to say? Um, first Gus, i didn't see you over there when i first said that's all right, right. Oh, yeah. it's not over Gus Kucheradis is here, and I appreciate that. So we have Mr. Kucheradis, we have Ms. Brand, who is our high school principal, Ms. Haberman, who is our high school assistant principal, and Dr. Tejador, who is our assistant superintendent, in addition to Mr. Sullivan. Who is the assistant? Assistant principal? Or assistant superintendent? <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment there, sir. Okay, now tell us briefly about um, the course going to Carnegie Hall. That's so what we're talking about. about. Yeah, okay. So um, the uh, chorus on, I think it was April the 21st, uh, did perform at Carnegie Hall. Um, they were part of a larger group of choruses that were selected from around the country. Um, they were literally from Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. They were really from all over the country. Um, and they did a phenomenal job singing um, at Carnegie Hall. Um, they were, as always, an impressive. What did they um, sing? They, um, the only song that I knew was um, from Willy Wonka. Um, you getting... lost me there. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, but but pretty much they were more classical type songs. Some of them were uh, religious in nature. They usually when they are singing at that level, they tend to sing religious songs because of the complexity um, required vocally from students. And so, uh, really, the kind of the traditional like pop type music and stuff like that isn't really a challenge for groups at that level. Um, so they do they do things in different languages, um, etc. So it was really wonderful, um, I, and I was fortunate to go and see them perform. So. And 
I've, I've said this for a very long time. Arts involves a lot. Music, art, uh, the band, the chorus, the plays that you put on down there. I, for this small community, they're second to none. I, I'm not just saying that. I really mean it. They bring tears to your eyes. They're so good. No, absolutely. I've been in a lot of different schools. And, um, it's amazing. Yeah, they, they really do perform at a level that for the size of our population is quite incredible. You know, I, I have to say too is the uh, the ROTC program that you mm -hmm. have is outstanding for this community. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of, that brings a lot of pride to a lot of people. Isn't that right, Jim? And if you, I mean, even Absolutely. speaking to that, um, if you look in one of the little articles I read about the JROTC or one of our students did, um, they are competing for the top four schools in the city that has something like five or 6,000 students that are considered like the king of JROTC when it comes to competitions. And we are really the only school that uh, gives them true competition. Um, and we're kind of considered that school of the Hudson, of the Hudson Valley. We have that kind of notoriety. And um, that's a testament to the hard work of our, the officers that run that program and the students who are dedicated to it because they are quite You're outstanding. You're a great job, that's great. Have we ever competed in the Helen Hayes Awards or, um, High school musicals. I know that our uh, we have a new director this year. Um, she um, was a Broadway actress herself, um, studied in England and performed in England. And she does have our students. Um, she had outside judges come in so that our students could compete. I'm not remembering. You might remember the name of the. Uh, to do so. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, uh, but they do have. Um, what happens in those situations is that they get judged and then individuals from our musical get asked to compete regionally um, against other other people and they get to go to New York City and like I don't know if any of our students were chosen this year but we actually are competing and we, we did a wonderful performance um, the Orange County Arts Council um, every year does something at the Galleria where they display both visual art and performing art and so we had several students who were represented there for the visual arts but also our Musical Legally Blonde um, performed about three or four songs along with nine or ten other high schools. Each did a little review in anticipation of their musical in early March. And it was really, it was awesome because they had a great crowd to see that, that perform and it was an advertisement for the work they did. And, and the performance was also quite excellent. They just, we have some incredibly talented students and it was a lot, it was well put together and a lot of fun. So we encourage the whole community to come out to those things. I know we have a Pops concert on May the 24th, which is incredibly popular. And um, just, again, if you want to see something fun and you, I mean, our, aside, our band does a wonderful job, but our chorus too, you're just watching and you're just, you're smiling the whole time because the kids are clearly having a good time and you have a good time as a result. I, I always wanted to be a singer. It just didn't turn out. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> They wanted me to sing solo. <laughs> solo, no one can hear me. I probably have to go just to watch that. But thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, ladies. Yes. Okay. Very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Gus. Thank you. Is there any uh, public comment on agenda items? I'll move my comments to later. Uh, discussion on a request from Vision for funding. You have that letter before you. Um, I'll let Mr. Howard uh, make the motion or anything else you would like to do on this one. I'd like to make a motion that we fund Vision for $500 and they're going to be working at Lady Cliff uh, Park. The reason that I'm bringing this up is that people thought that Lady Cliff has a lot of money and they give a lot of money back to villages and towns for beautification and, and other things and they don't they may meet once every three months or maybe once every six months and right now uh, we haven't heard from Lady Cliff the Alumni Association and they do want to get that park done before June so I'm asking that we approve uh, additional funds of $500 for vision I'll make a motion on that. I'll second. A question on if I'm a question on the motion, uh, Elise. Um, I'm being asked if, if someone has litigation against the village. 
can 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 this happen? Can we can we vote on this? I'm not making it real clear. It, let me answer it quite yeah. simply. Yeah. Um, if you are being asked for funds by an organization, you can consider that separate from any litigation. I understand. You I understand. can consider <coughs> when you decide what you're going to do you can consider that there might be litigation, but it doesn't affect your ability to fund something like this. Right. If that's and I want to make it clear, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not, uh, my comments have nothing to do with, necessarily with the $500. Okay. It's a separate issue. Okay, yeah. you answered my question. Okay, so, uh, there's a motion, there's a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, thank you so much. Uh, 65 Snyder Avenue, a drainage project, which has been before this board in previous, uh, before this board. Um, we have paperwork here uh, from uh, what's being asked from surveys to uh, easements, etc. And we're waiting, uh, we need to ask yet? I have a drafted a drainage easement that should be delivered to the property owner so that he can consult with his attorney. Uh, the only thing, we have received a fairly recent survey. The village engineer did request, however, that the survey be uh, also show topography because my understanding is when the pipe is replaced, we need to know, make sure that there's a downgrade on exactly where to put the pipe. So uh, that's an outstanding request that should be asked of the um, of the property owner. So uh, we re have received uh, paperwork from the property owner. We, is, we need a little bit more. A little more information on the survey. The survey is from this year, I think. Okay. April. So if he could ask his surveyor to show, you know, general topography, that would be very helpful. And then we will need an easement survey. So it might be a good idea to do them at the same time. The other uh, request we're going to make, or you will make of the property owner, is to allow the engineer to take one more walk through the property to see if it's possible to perhaps move that pipe so there Correct. is you know, less disturbance of the of the owner's property when that pipe is replaced. Correct. So Correct. the village is moving forward, um, and you know. It Elise, can um, I ask of you, or can I ask of you to do such a letter? Of course. And, and send us a copy for the file and that uh, for Gina, and that you mail it to the property owner. Is I, that possible? I can do that on behalf of the village okay. if you're requesting. So if we could, the best that we can, not knowing what the future holds, but ask for everything that we need mm -hmm. as we know it today, which is what you just said, which yes. were the items that you just said. Right. Is that okay? That's fine. And, okay. And, and Mr. Mayor, so Elise, could you please also check with uh, our engineer, MHE, one more time in case they feel there may be one other thing or two other things that they may need on there yes. as far as the location of some of the existing structures because mm -hmm. I didn't see them on there so when the surveyor is out there doing the topography he could also pick out those entities and also show them on the plan it especially if it would help our engineer <coughs> in assessing <coughs> correct right. yes And Elise, I'm sorry, as you had mentioned, there might be a better way than we have all met up there with the engineer. There might be a, a different way. Might be. And I, you could tell uh, the engineer that I would meet him up there with, uh, with uh, John Jones. Sure. To show him what I think me. I'll show him what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. That's a lot. I appreciate you doing it. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to open up a public hearing on the property. You have it before you notice the violation and in order to remedy and notice of hearing, I'll open it up at this time um, for uh, 6 Cooks Lane 104-8-10. Now I think there's been some movement on that property. Yeah, I met with Bruce, I met with Bruce today and there 
looking into it now, and we're also talking about bringing an exterminator in to get rid of the raccoons. The house is open. So, um, once we do that, Mr. Howard, uh, then we're going to have to figure out how to close the house up. <clears throat> and then we're going to probably have a boarded house, right. which we don't want either. Nope. But that'll be, the, that'll be the sequence on what's going to happen here. <laughs> Elise, I think you might hear six cooks laying again. <laughs> okay. If I may, Mr. Mayor, you might recall that some time ago we talked about how properties get boarded up. And I indicated to the village that there is a certain standard for commercial buildings. However, there is no standard for private property. In other words, in commercial buildings, you can only use plywood, for example, temporarily. Otherwise, you have to have lines or something so that it doesn't look like it's just boarded up with plywood. There's nothing in the regulations <coughs> or in your code that require a similar visual. So I would just say to the board again, you might want to consider the possibility of revising that and that might be a topic at the code workshop to put on your... You're, you're exactly correct and so, um, so the public knows we're I'm putting together a meeting with the board and our attorney and uh, the building inspector where we'll get together and uh, work on some of these items. Might be a junk car, might be a boarded building, it, a host of property maintenance issues uh, to see where we have to get um, maybe stricter, maybe higher fines, uh, maybe, maybe the law is there already. I have a feeling that a lot of this what we talk about seems like every meeting um, might involve just enforcement and then again we might need stricter enforcement we've talked about fees uh, for many different things and, and so that'll all come up at the meeting um, that we're scheduling uh, am but I you're, no go ahead, go ahead am I understanding right uh, trustee Alward correctly that uh, you you're recommending that we not move ahead with this particular one because they do plan to remediate? They do, but I think we should be moving ahead with it I, as I well. Do too. Remediate, Thank you. Yeah, remediate yeah, as far as getting uh, the, the critters out of there. <laughs> right. And then we're going to have to, I think, take it another step. But we should take this step yeah. tonight. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, Madam Clerk, do I need a motion for that? Excuse me. Problems. Digital problems? Audio it's not working? It's working, but there's some glitches. They're, We're working on that. They're already calling. They're already calling you. I didn't put the number out there. <laughs> I want to know that if they're hearing us. That's all I care about. Okay. So Madam Clerk, do what do we need a motion for six Cooks Avenue? Yes. To hire an exterminator? Or no? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any more comments on uh, six Cooks Lane? If not, I'll close the public hearing. I'll come back to it as to what we're going to do. Property maintenance on 111-1-15-422. Now this is 16. Those numbers mean nothing to any of us. This is 1610 Route 9W. Uh, which we know is to be the Pointer Echo Motel. Um, Trustee Livesey and I have talked about this many times. We've talked mm -hmm. about it. He's talked about it up here many times. Um, he has a, a collage of, of uh, pictures. I mean, they're really, you know, there's, the doors are gone. They're kicked in. There's holes in the ceiling and the roof. Um, I mean, these are, these are really bad. They're bad because of an eyesore, and they're bad because uh, someone could get hurt from children to young adults to people maybe living there because maybe somehow they have nowhere else to go, which is sad. But these are the pictures. We all know you just have to go buy it, the Puerto Rico Motel. Now, uh, I had, Merv, I want you to talk about this as you, you, you do. Uh, I had a discussion with the attorney today, and... Um, 
I'm going to let her speak for a moment, but uh, this board, um, this board is totally upset with the Old Guard Hotel owners. I don't, I, it doesn't matter to me who they are. This is a disgrace. It's a disgrace to this community. You're taking, they're taking advantage of us and it's not going to be tolerated. And I really mean this, we all mean this, Merv means this, it's, when it's not gonna be tolerated uh, anymore. So Elise, I know I spoke to you about several things about tonight. Can you give me a, what you've been thinking about? How to get this fixed? It's not fixed, torn down, I'm sorry. Torn down, okay. Torn down. Um, the owners did commit to tearing the building down. Now there was a meeting between the building inspector, the village engineer, uh, and representatives from the owners. I'm not sure exactly when that took place. A couple weeks. Okay, so I, uh, there was some concern that this wasn't even brought up. And by this I mean the tearing down of the, and removal of the, of the motel that's there. So I called the village engineer to ask him what was it discussed, and if so, what happened. It was a major topic of discussion at that meeting. The um, builders, the owners want to take the motel down. However, when the, our village engineer asked about potential hazards, they were told that there are no hazards. They've done a, a phase one environmental assessment. Our engineer then pointed out that that's not what he's talking about. Is there asbestos or something else? So the owners went back, found out that there was an assessment of asbestos on the property. So until they, they the owners, supply that report to our engineer and the building inspector, the building inspector cannot issue a permit to demolish the hotel. So that report has been done according to the owners and is going to be submitted to the village engineer who can then uh, review it and consult with the building inspector as to the building permit for demolition. It will have to be taken down by professionals using hazmat gear. Uh, so. Um, I would have to say that the owners are aware through the village engineer and myself specifically that they need to move with all due haste and the only issue now is getting that permit which means it's going to have to be, um, you know, you can't just go tear it down. It has to be torn At least down. who gets the permit? The owners will get the permit. And the owners will pay to have it taken down? Oh yes. Versus the the village trying to take it down, condemning it, which is another route. You could condemn it and have it taken down, but it would have to be taken down uh, at a, a fairly significant cost. You know, Elise, the, the problem is, is that it came to my attention that people have been up there, and I got together with the police department because it was said to me that there may be somebody homeless up there. We went up there, um, I took pictures, there's the doors are busted in in some areas. The windows are open. There's definitely been somebody in there. The back is all open. The place is absolutely dangerous. There's no other way, no other word to put it. It's dangerous. And we went through there, me and a police officer, and then we went through a couple other areas. I, I just can't believe, you know, and we talk about this all the time at the meetings and people at home are probably saying, here we go again. But I, I can't believe that this building can sit the way it does on 9W as much of a hazard as it is. And, and for, the, for the builders that want to put this new hotel up there, I don't think there's a care in the world of them of what this place looks like. I, I really don't. But for the residents of this community, for people to see this, they're, they're looking at this like, I guess they don't care. What the heck is going on? How can they have a building sitting like that? And we, the board, sit here at every meeting talking about this, and these guys are letting it sit there. And I, I just can't believe it anymore, especially after being in there now. I, I, want, I want this to be straight out on record to everybody that's out there that I think we, the board, are telling them 
they, they, there's a lot of precaution that has to be taken in this. Because if somebody goes in there, uh, they're, go they're going to get hurt. Sorry about this. Should we stand or something? That's the only one. What was that program? Somebody, somebody is definitely going to get hurt inside there. And everything is open. The windows are open. The doors are open. The roof's about to fall down. The floors are about to cave in. It's really, really bad in there. And, and I, I, I don't know what protects us anymore. Yeah, I, well, I, was, I, I don't think almost anything does. See, we're, uh, you know this but more better than we do. We're, on li we're, we're liable now because we've been talking about it for three months in public. No? No? Okay. I That's hope. good. It's, it's, it's not the village's responsibility to secure yes. a private property. You can, and you can take that okay. action, either by uh, demolishing it after it's been condemned, uh, by you know some other method, putting up a fence or closing it up. However, my only suggestion would be you can take that action. That's It's been cited. It's been discussed numerous times. So you can take that action. I'm just apprising the board that it has been a point of discussion and that the owner has not been able to get a permit for demolition because they haven't provided the village engineer with the report that he is requesting. At least I'll be honest with you, I could care less what their discussion is anymore, really. I, I want the place taken down. That, that's what I want. I, I don't want to sit here talking about this all the time. I don't want it to be sitting on 9W like that. I want the owner to take it down. All right. Uh, trust. So, so I'm going to let me say one thing, and then we had a very long discussion today. Yes, we did. No, no, we did. Oh, we did. And so, we did, did, and I appreciated that. But so did so did our attorney. Okay. Um, she uh, she's always known, but she's going to take care of it now. She's always been taking care of it. I don't want to make it sound like she hasn't. At least I, I don't want, I don't mean that. But you know now that's it. Whatever we have to do, you know, I know it has asbestos, but they're only going to have so much time to. Then. Let me ask you, is the next step for them to find an asbestos removal to take this building down? My understanding yes. from discussing this with the village engineer is that the village engineer is, is expecting to get a report on the asbestos, whatever okay. that means. I, I'm not an engineer. Okay. But, uh, but For so any other hazardous materials that may yes. be in that building. Yes. Okay. We so, know there's asbestos. Well, I don't know what else is in there. So that. my only question is, and I see here action required, secure the building by closing, locking, boarding up windows, broken doors, etc. So could we can request, because they have 12 days to do this based on our action required, correct? Mm -hmm. So at a bare minimum, if they could at least close the doors and windows up or board them up per this action. If not, then we as a board could at the minimum board those up. Yes. That's until right. they get us the proper information and report on how they are going to address the hazardous waste when they tear that building down. That's correct. If that's what the board wants to do, you can so that take one, that I, action tonight. I apologize. You can say, you have 12 days, and if at the end of 12 days you haven't done it, the village will do it, and I can, you know, you can take that action tonight, and I can call the owners tomorrow. Wait, uh, let me ask this. Uh, do we have to include in that motion that we will do it yeah. after 12 days, or can it, you have 12 days? I want to, I'd rather have them, they have 12 days to do it, or... Well, that's what this action is. They have 12 days to do it. Right, but I don't want to see the village have to do it. I mean, the village to get involved is that it's going to cost these people money. Which gets reimbursed. And the reimbursed. next step would be, well, what, what you would do is relevy it. Relevy it onto their taxes. So The next step, if they don't do it within 12 days, is for the building inspector to issue an appearance ticket. And they show up in justice court with probably the building inspector, probably me, unless, you know, probably me, I'm the village attorney, and then the court would decide the issues of fines and penalties and etc. Or this board could then have 
the village board it up and secure it. And whatever that cost is, it would be levied as against the, the property as a tax. But we I have a couple but, of options. Right, but I believe, it, I mean, if you do this action this evening and let them know that we would like them to board it up um, within 12 days, uh, and we realize that they are getting us a hazardous material report, mm -hmm. um, but at the minimum, we need that done. So we can see that they are at least moving along and they're securing that building. Right. I mean, I, and I understand it needs to come down. Jim, I, 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 I really appreciate I what you're saying. I really do, but I don't want to see a board to build it. I want to see greenery. That's what I want to see. I don't well, want to see trash. Well, as Elise said a while ago, when we started talking about boarded um, commercial buildings, they only can leave it like that so long. They can, it, it, yes, if they're going to use plywood, it's it's only a temporary. Yeah. And what's temporary? Uh, 60 to 90 days. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if it's yeah. actually defined in your code. Uh, it, right. it, it, that's it, probably something. I think the best action would be that it's 30 days. Yes, actually. it's defined in the code. It is 30 days, yes. I would recommend to the board that we move forward with our attorney on, on this document right here. This document right here. I would love to make that motion. Th there, there's a lot in here, but I'll just give you one, something on the first. Secure building by closing, locking, and boarding up open or broken doors and windows blast within, two, within 12 days. So they'll have 12 days, I guess, from tomorrow to at least to do everything that's in this document. And at least I'm going to read it uh, later on, but I think there's even more. But whatever, mm -hmm. whatever this document, they didn't show up for the hearing, for the violation notice, therefore uh, asking for an extension, which I, I don't think we would give them any extension. Uh, they should, the remedy should be the document that we have before us. Right. That's a suggestion I'm making. I'll and we'll go. I'll take that. All right, and and then uh, so everyone knows I'm calling the engineer tomorrow. I wrote it down here uh, to see if there's been a conversation between the Old Guard Hotel and the Village Engineer uh, pertaining to asbestos and any other um, type of hazardous way, uh, hazardous uh, conditions that are inside. I'm going to call the engineer tomorrow. And you will all know the answer tomorrow. I'm going to have a conversation with the engineer because he really hasn't, he's kind of new here with us. Uh, like, not like Elise, where you know we're fed up. You know, you know we're fed up. So I will let Pat Hines know that. So uh, we'll come back to this. Right, so we have a motion now, right? No, not yet. No? Not yet. Let's do, not, I'm sorry. Uh, if there's no more comment, I'll close the, uh, this public hearing on this address. Next, we have a public hearing open now for 10 Muller Avenue, which should be short because, Brian, as you know, I think that's being remedied. Yeah, well, I was there today. Okay. Uh, the construction group has been brought in, and I spoke with the building department. Okay. They're on it now. I'll close the public hearing on, on 10 Muller Avenue. I'll open up the public hearing on 117 Center Street. Is there anyone here to speak about 117 Center? So I would recommend to the board that uh, after we're through with these public hearings that the, this building should be secured by closing, locking, boarding up, open and broken doors and windows within 12 days. Motion is closed. Last uh, property maintenance hearing is 9 Sweezy Avenue. Is there anyone here from 9 Sweezy Avenue? Now, as we know, uh, some of these buildings, and probably most of them, well, half of them, whatever, are, are, uh, have been taken over by banks, maybe even walkaways. Uh, this one seems to be connected to uh, Scenic Cuts in Lane, Las Vegas, New, uh, Nevada. So maybe they lost all their money. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. So is there anyone here representing 9 Sweezy Avenue? Okay, if not, we'll, uh, we'll close the public hearing. So, and, and we can go through this quick. And, and individually, we should uh, 
117. Um, Alice, do you do this? Or do we do this? Send the, the notices of, of what happened tonight and what they have to do. I have not been sending them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The village that clerk does. No. I, okay. I just want to make. I, I didn't know. Okay. The village clerk does. So I would make a recommendation to the board if they would motion that that the uh, 117 Center Street secure building by closing, locking, boarding up, open or broken doors and windows within 12 days of of the date of. I guess it's the date of the letter received. May I have a motion? I make a motion. Motion by Trustee Livesey. Second. Is there a second? Trustee Howard, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you so much. Yep. Next we have um, 8 Sweezy Avenue. If I could have a motion to that the owners have to secure. Nine. 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 Nine Getting old. Nine Sweezy. Secure the building by closing, locking, and boarding up open or broken doors, windows within 12 days. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Trustee Livesey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. The third one is uh, the famous uh, 1610 Route 9W uh, Puerto Rico Motel. Um, Elise, will you do this one? You? I'll notify Because we took, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit more than. Yes, I'll go through the violation. Okay. So the record will show that our attorney will address this one by mailing uh, the owner's um, proper papers to uh, adhere to the violation. May I have a motion? I'll move, I'll move in. Motion by Trustee Murphy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> and again, I will call the village attorney and get that information. And uh, at least I'll share that with you too, of course. Okay. All right. Six coats, Joe. Six coats. Six coats. The, cr the critters. Okay. I hate to do this to critters. Um, but uh, we need a motion. Um, can I see six, uh, six cooks? Thank you. So six cooks. Someone in Socrates, New York owns it. So the action required is to secure the build to secure the building by closing, locking, boarding up, open or broken doors and windows within 12 days, and added to this, if I'm correct, to hire an exterminator to come in and um, uh, make it critter free. Catch some raccoons. Raccoon. Where's it say? Relocate. Raccoons. Relo relocate out on 293. <laughs> It's not like a dog. They're not finding their way back. Wasn't there a guy that went out after critters? There was a show one time. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we add that to this one. You have it, Gina? Please? Okay. May I have a motion? make that motion. Motion by Trustee Ramos. Is there a second? Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Charlie. Phew. Could I have the minutes approved uh, from April the 12th, 2018? It was a budget uh, meeting. And then we had uh, a regular meeting on the 16th of April. And then we had a special meeting on the 24th of April to adopt the budget. I make a motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I have to abstain on April 24th. I wasn't there. <clears throat> All right. So uh, we had unanimous votes on April the 12th and April the 16th. And if it's legal, we'll take a revote on special meeting on the April 24th. Mm -hmm. If I could have that vote again. May I have a roll call? For just the one special yeah. meeting? Yeah. On the April 24th. Trustee Howard. Aye. Trustee Lindsay. Aye. Trustee Aye. Abstain. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, the next couple of items on the agenda deal with the wastewater treatment plant and the improvements that we have to make down there. And I want to say we have to make down there. Um, so the resolution for Secra. 
negative decoration for the wastewater treatment plant improvements. Do you, do you have that? I do. Would you would you read that for us? I sure will. Thank you. Resolution Village of Highland Falls Board of Trustees improvements to existing wastewater treatment plant. New York State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker negative declaration to dated today. This notice is issued pursuant to part 617 of the implementing regulations pertaining to Article 8, the State Environmental Quality Review of the Environmental Conservation Law. The Board of Trustees of the Village of Highland Falls as the only agency authorized to effectuate improvements to the wastewater treatment plant and is therefore the only agency authorized to act as lead agency pursuant to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker has determined that the proposed action described below will not have a significant adverse effect on the environment. The title of the action is Improvements to the Village Wastewater Treatment Plan. <coughs> its seeker status is Type 2 Action Pursuant to 6 NYCRR 617.7 C1. The description of the action is replacement of existing components of the village wastewater treatment plant, including the following system components. One, replacement of existing sludge belt press and conveyor. Two, replacement of one of the existing rotating biological con uh, contactors. Three, replacement of the existing sludge heater and exchangers. And four, replacement of an existing standby generator. The location is 95 Rose Drive, the Village of Highland Falls. Reasons supporting this determination, and the determination here is the negative declaration as a type two action. The improvements will replace existing aging components of the Village Wastewater Treatment Plant in kind, involving no substantial <coughs> changes in an existing structure or facility. And that is the description right out of the secret regulations for a type two action. Um, uh, subsection C1 of those of those regulations. Be it resolved that, based on the Village Board's review and consideration of the project, the long form environmental assessment form, which was uh, put together by myself and um, um, signed by the mayor, and I used the, the seeker mapper to do that. Supplementary technical information, public comments, and consideration of the criteria for determining, determining significance set forth in 6 NYCRR 617.7 C1. The proze, project is I'm sorry. The project is designed together with the applicant's um, completion of the. Oh, I'm sorry. That's let me re, re, revise that. and consideration of the criteria for determining significance set forth in the regulations, the Board of Trustees hereby resolves that this is a type two action needing no further seeker action. On a motion by trustee. I'll make that motion. Ramos, seconded by trustee. May. Livesey. Yeah. The foregoing. Okay. You know, it is adopted on a roll call yeah. vote. Of May I have a roll call? Trustee Elwood? Aye. Trustee Lindsay? Aye. Trustee Ramis? Aye. Trustee Murphy? Aye. 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 And this um, resolution uh, then lists um, the mayor as a contact person uh, and will be sent to the village clerk for um, registration and also the e EFC, the Environmental Facilities Corporation. Uh, thank you, Elise. There, some of them are long. Now, Gina, uh, the next thing here uh, is what we just did. Am I correct? The next thing on my meeting just has to be done now. All of this. Oh, I thought, okay. I, I'm sorry. I thought that's what we just did. Okay. Elise, can you do that, please? So the board, um, before it can pass this bond resolution, had to close Seeker, which it just did. 
And now I'm going to read a summary or an abstract of the bond, um, bond issuance. Village of Highland Falls, New York. Please take notice that on May 7, 2018, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Highland Falls in the County of Orange, New York, adopted the bond resolution entitled Bond Resolution of the Village of Highland Falls, New York, adopted May 7, 2018, authorizing the construction of improvements to the Village Wastewater Treatment Facility, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $2.2 million, appropriating said amount for such purpose, and authorizing the issuance of bonds in the principal amount of $2.2 million to finance said appropriation. An abstract of such bond resolution concisely stating the purpose and effect thereof being as follows. First, authorizing the Village of Highland Falls to construct improvements to the Village Wastewater Treatment Facility substantially as described in the engineering report dated April 17, 2018, prepared for the Village by Magoe Hauser and Edsel Consulting Engineers, DPC, including the replacement of sludge belt press and conveyor, rotating biological contactor, anaerobic digester sludge heater and exchangers, and a standby generator, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof, including preliminary costs and costs incidental <coughs> thereto, and the financing thereof, is $2.2 million, appropriating said amount for such purpose, stating the plan of financing includes the issuance of $2.2 million uh, in bonds of the village to finance said appropriation and the collection of sewer rates to pay the principal of said bonds and the interest thereon. Second, authorizing the issuance of 2.2 million serial bonds of the village pursuant to the local finance law of the state of New York to finance said appropriation. Third, determining and stating that A, the period of probable usefulness of the object or purpose for which the bonds are authorized is 40 years. B, the proceeds of the bonds herein authorized and any bond anticipation notes issued in, in anticipation of bonds may be applied to reimburse the village for expenditures made after the effective date of this resolution for the purpose of which uh, said bonds are authorized. And C, the proposed <coughs> maturity of serial bonds will exceed five years. Fourth, determining that said bonds and any bond anticipation notes issued in anticipation of said bonds and the renewals of said bond anticipation notes shall be general obligations of the village payable by general tax upon all taxable <coughs> real property within the village and pledging to their payment the faith and credit of the village. Fifth, delegating to the village treasurer the powers and duties as to the issuance of said bonds and any bond anticipation notes issued in anticipation of said bonds or the renewals thereof and other powers. And sixth, determining that the bond resolution is subject to a permissive referendum. Uh, there should be a vote on this. So we will have a motion by. I make a motion. Trustee Livesey. Motion Lizzie. by Trustee Livesey. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. That motion motion by Trustee Ramis. Second. May I have? May I have roll call? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All set, Elise? Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is a resolution to transfer reserve funds. Uh, this is part of our old budget um, to go into uh, reserve funds into our new budget, whereas the Village of Holland Falls wishes to the extent prudent to set aside f from budget lines not fully used certain sums of, to provide 
for future stability and of operations protecting taxpayers from the unforeseen needs. And whereas the village, by demonstrating its financial health, will, will benefit from borrowing at more attractive interest rates. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the village makes the following outlays from its 2017-2018 budget, I just want to say that's the one we're closing out, to provide the following reserves as follows. Transfer the following allocations in the budget. Village Hall re uh, Repair Reserve, 15000 DPW Vehicle Reserve, 15000 Fire Department Truck Reserve, Engines, 30000 Fire Department Truck Reserve, Command Vehicle, 5000 Police Department Vehicle Reserve, 20700 Water Department Vehicle Reserve, 10000 Sewer Department Vehicle Reserve, 10000 The total of those numbers is 105700 Transfer funds fund category A through E above to line A0000.0962. Transfer fund category F above to line F0000.0962. Transfer fund category G above to line G0000.0962. All transfers to be deposited in accordance with present village investment policy into the reserve account hereby established. May I have a motion? We agreed to, just so you know, we agreed to all this during our budget. I'll make a motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Livesey. May I have roll call? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have a budget transfer of $2,400, $2,400 from A1340.01, which is the budget officer's line, to the A1325.01 to the treasurer's line. I have a motion. So moved. Motion by Trustee Murphy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Albert. May, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I would like to have authorization to sign an engagement letter with Hawkins, Delafield, and Wood. Uh, there are bond council, and uh, you have the price there at $2,200. I'm sorry. Oh, that's the amount we're borrowing, of course. Uh, Two million two hundred thousand. Uh, that's for the wastewater treatment plant. We may not borrow that amount. It's so asking for authorization, and we certainly we w might not spend that amount. We we don't have estimates or anything yet on this, but this is the process. Uh, yes. This engagement letter is lost. The bond resolution together. This is the work that he does, uh, not to exceed $15,000 to put all the financial papers together uh, to apply for a, um, low interest loan, hopefully grants. And just, so let me take care of that first. So uh, this has to be done. Motion by Trustee Murphy, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Ramos, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Just so everyone knows, we've been working very, a lot of hours, I don't know about hard, we sit at the conference table, but it's, it's tedious work to go over the um, low interest loan grant um, uh, requests that we're putting in to offset this project. Uh, I guess I could say a lot of work, because it's a lot of time. Uh, Gina's been putting a lot of time in, more than me, uh, but she's doing well at it. Thank you, Gina. So we'll see where that takes us. We hopefully it'll take us to some money. Okay, we're done with that, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Next, I authorize the mayor to sign change orders to the senior citizen project decrease of fifteen thousand five hundred ninety-five dollars. Now I'm gonna. I, she doesn't like this, but I'm gonna go back to Gina. You know, yeah, I was there, and yes, I talked about it, and all this kind of stuff. But it was Gina, uh, our village clerk, who 
put these numbers together as to what the contractor, Butler, uh, uh, was responsible for. He wasn't done on time. He wasn't done on time. He wasn't done on time. Every time we came up with a punch list, he wasn't done on time. And uh, uh, we decided to go after him uh, for uh, fines and fees. And we've submitted this to our engineer. He agrees. And um, this is a, authorizing me to sign a change order, reducing the price to Butler by $15,595. Uh, Gina, before we take this vote, thank you. Thank you. Really, I really mean that. Thank you. This is a lot of money that we won't, that uh, can go to something else. All right. So may I have a motion authorizing myself to sign this change order? Motion. Thank you, Mayor. Motion by Trustee uh, Albert. Is there a second? Second. Trustee Livesey, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. All right. Now we have a resignation. And, I, uh, you know, a lot of times we say with regret. This one's with regret. This uh, young fella here worked down the highway department, Earl Sakotic. I'm probably not pronouncing his name right. Right, Brian? Yeah. yeah. I'm not, right? No, you are. Oh, I am. Okay. So, uh, as of May 2, 2018, I will be resigning my from my position as a laborer with the Village of Holland Falls DPW. I would like to take the, the time to say thank you to say thank you to the past and current board members for giving me the opportunity. I would like to say thank you to the ladies at Village Hall uh, who were always quick to help me out with any questions or problems I was having. I would like to say thank you to the guys in the DPW, the Water Department, the Sewer Department, whom I've had the pleasure of working with. And I would like to thank the residents who took the time to talk to me. I am always great. I am always grateful, very grateful for the opportunity that was given to me. There is so much I am taking away from this. It was an honor to serve, be a part of the of this community. Thank you, Earl. Now, this kid, kid, when you're my age, and most people are kids, but this young man. Uh, I, I don't think it matters how he came here to work for us, although there's a good backstory. Uh, but uh, never had a complaint about him. I never saw him slack off. I never saw him not do what he was supposed to do. Um, I can only hope that we find someone to take his place that's of his caliber. Um, so if we could make a motion to accept his resignation. I'll make a motion and wish him the best. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded second. Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We have quotes now uh, for grass cutting. There were two identical low bidders. I recommend that the board accept the quote of $12,595 from Hudson Seal Coat and Landscaping. At present, they are they are our grass cutting contractor and we have no issues, problems, um, or complaints uh, with their performance. I don't think we've ever had two quotes come in the same. And it's an odd number. <laughs> so being there hasn't been any complaints, uh, uh, and they seem to be uh, the highway department, the street superintendent um, thinks they're performing their job. I guess I would recommend that too. I'll make a motion for that. Motion by Trustee Livesey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, new phone system. You have a memo? I think this was done, in fact, I know it was done between the police chief and our purchasing agent. So we're, we were looking for a suitable uh, replacement for our old system. The current system that we have was installed in 2001 and has become too expensive to repair when there was a problem. And I can tell you there's a lot of problems downstairs with the phones. And most hardware software is unavailable anymore. 
So they're recommending we have acquired three quotes and determined that Optima Communication System Inc. is not only the best, the least expensive, but the best uh, option for our needs. I recommend approving a five-year lease with Optima in the amount of $215 a month. Currently, we have budgeted $250 a month. At least it's lower. <laughs> I move that uh, yeah. we go with the recommendation of Optima. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Howard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right. We have four events here that we need to approve. Approve. One is the unveiling of the military banners on May 19th at quarter to 10 to 11.15 outside the police station. May I have a motion to approve? Paperwork's been submitted. I'll make a motion on that. A motion by Trustee Livesey. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Murphy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have an event, Memorial Day, May 28th. 1015 Memorial Park, Green Location, Holland Falls Firehouse. I have a motion. Motion. Hey, I'm sorry. Was that it? Motion. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have an event, National Night Out. Police Department holds this on August the 7th, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Memorial Park, lot number two. I'll make that motion. Motion by Trustee Ramos. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Hour. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have an event, the Art Walk 2018, opening at Lady Cliff Park on the 9th of June, 4 o'clock to 5.30. Motion. Motion by Tr Trustee Murphy. Second. Second by Trustee Ramos. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. You Thank missed, you. You missed one. Now. What did I do? Yeah, huge I did one. four. A huge one. July 4th. Oh, that's next month. Next month meeting, buddy. I got a whole bunch of them. That's a big one. That's a big one. Thank you for remembering that. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, set a... Okay. We need to set a meeting before the... Uh, by May 31st. Um, and it's to pay bills. It's nothing else but to pay bills. It's a formality. We do it every year. So, and if this doesn't work, it's fine. So I would... Uh, the week of, of the week of the 28th which is uh, Memorial Day so if we go to Tuesday the 29th and then the 30th uh, uh, I would recommend uh, an 8 o'clock meeting uh, downstairs there's no other business it's just to pay bills mm -hmm. if I can get three of you there it's great if I can get four or five that's great 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Oh, the 29th. Yeah, again, it's we're going to be it's two minutes. Okay, so we'll set it for uh, let's set it for the I don't care what date 29, 30, 31, or the 29th. Yeah. Merv wrote the 29th. Wrote it. It's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. April 29th yeah. at 8. Okay, thank you so much. That was easy. Oh, may I have a motion? May I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, let's do uh, bills and claims for the fiscal year 17 18. Mine has no total. Do you have a total? You have a total? total? Okay, I have a total. Yeah. What's on the agenda? Is it 113 or 112? I have 113, 355, 59. Yes. Okay. Could we have a motion to pay the bills? Motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Murphy. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried.
Okay. You know what? Before my comments, Jose. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. We, no, that's okay. It happens. So let's talk. What would you like to? Um, just we got the letter. I was just trying to see what was going on as, as far as what we need to do from here. We got the, uh, we received the, uh, excuse me, the survey. So, so we had talked about it. Okay. Okay, a little while ago. Um, and um, within a couple of days, uh, our attorney was going to send you a letter, okay. which she still will, uh, but the gist of it will be? We received the survey. Um, I sent, um, uh, I revised the draft easement and asked the board to send yeah. you a copy of that for your attorney to look at. Um, the village engineer, however, would like to see added to the survey a uh, topography. What? Topography. Topography? So, you know, your survey is recent. So if you go back to your surveyor, he can probably add the topo to okay. that. Uh, that will help our engineer decide, like, the lay of the land, because it has to flow downward, obviously. Um, also, we'll need a, a survey of the actual easement itself. And in order to put that together, the village engineer would like to come back and look at your property one more time, along with, I believe, the mayor. Um, the a survey for the easement? The easement itself has easement. to be surveyed, you know. Okay. And it'll be varying in width. According to the village engineer, you know, there's very little space in some areas and wider in other areas so that we can get equipment in and out. This, the village engineer would like to see, as well as the village board, would like to see if maybe there's a way to put the pipe on your property that um, is less intrusive, where there's it limits the disturbance, rather than just putting it back where it is. So they'd like to just take one more look at your property, see if they can do that. Okay. So that's going to be the gist. When they're coming out. Or? Yeah. I Jose, I really, and I know, you know, we all work different hours. I, I really would like you there. And I know you're being cooperative the best that you can with, with work. So, yes, when, when I, and this will be very soon, when I get the village engineer to come down, uh, we're going to come up. Now, I'm going to let you know when that is. And either you can be there or maybe you want someone else there. Whatever you like. Okay. I will call you when we're we'll come up there and you can hear what he has to say. I have a suggestion. I'm not an engineer. I don't know what my suggestion is going to mean. But, it, but you know. Um, but in the meantime, you, uh, Elise will send you a letter. And there's a couple things or one thing or something that you have to get. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, so I want to go over with the board. These are very quick uh, things that we're working on. And the public, let them know what we're working on. So with the union contracts, uh, one of the items among several, uh, I think for the village's benefit, taxpayers, we have to look at the maintenance of benefits. We, we just recently spoke about that. Yeah. Uh, I want to go to this gentleman's soon. I have down here the Andiar Park drainage. And I'll, I'll come right back to you. Uh, the charging station uh, for those that have electric cars started to go in. Started to go in today. Uh, up by the. Uh, I know for me it's just for me I would say it's just south of the three tier garden. I don't know how else to explain it, but you'll see it's going in. Uh, it should be um, uh, usable for electric cars uh, with, within probably much shorter than a month. Uh, the board has to look at some curbing uh, up at Drew and Church, the corner of Drew and Church. Um, we have to look at an issue at 17 Hillside. Pool repair. Uh, Kevin Hurst is working on the pool repair. Um, that's a that's a uh, time sensitive uh, yeah, that's, that's project, that's better, yeah. and uh, I'm anxious to uh, uh, the electric. I think is uh, compliant now, yep. and um, the water is out of. Of course, it rains every other day or whatever, it's but out, it's all out right now. And now we're going to be able to tell what needs to be done. 
Uh, within uh, soon, I'll be uh, with DPW is going to be installing uh, two stones, two, I don't want to call them plaques, but very large stones in Lady Cliff Park. Um, I have here Jose Sierra's issue. Uh, with Brian Howard's help, we're coming up, and uh, Mary downstairs, we're coming up with uh, employee appraisal forms that we're going to start using. We have to come up with rules and regulations um, uh, for the Senior Citizen Center. Um, only certain people have keys right now. Not, uh, that doesn't mean everyone should have a key, but there's a lot of issues that have to be, we have to come up with some policies, if you will, for the Senior Citizen Center. And then eventually, um, I may put the oldest and the youngest uh, on this committee, uh, Merv and Mr. Howard. We're not going to tell you who's the oldest and who's the youngest. <laughs> uh, big thing, though, really, rules and regulations for the center. Um, we have to address the sidewalk at 23 Sweezy Avenue. Rules and regulations for the center, that, that's going to be a that's going to be a good one. <laughs> you don't even know. That's going to be a good one. You don't even know how that's going to go. <laughs> Believe me. Believe I'll, I'll, I'll me. I'll be there just to hear this one. Um, I have to meet with Central Hudson uh, about uh, pre-construction. I'm not happy with Central Hudson and what they've done to these roads, which will be, uh, which I'll take care of. Um, LED lights, you have, uh, I want to say 10 words on that? Last email that I sent out um, confirmed that we were looking to get the same wattage or somewhere close to the is existing with the LED lights. Um, so Good. that's the best I have from ONR at this point in time. Okay. Um, I'll be meeting with the engineer this Wednesday um, and someone from the beautification committee, village beautification committee, walking the sidewalks from Cousins Avenue to the West Point Gate for the grant we have to replace sidewalks and, and install trees. That's going to ha be happening soon. Um, to meet with the town to talk about the water agreement the recreation agreement and uh, we're starting to have an issue on where we're going to dump leaves even though it's just the, they're just coming out now but this is something that has to be taken care of now uh, I mentioned the senior citizen center our labor our police department we mentioned before an executive session Yeah, oh, we have to decide, I really would like us to decide, uh, do we want a wireless communication or not? A lot of people want it. There's no, it's hard to get reception here. And there's some people who don't. So instead of just doing nothing, I really would like to know what to do. Um, Uh, soon, uh, you will see, you remember last year we uh, lit the Christmas lights, uh, the professional lights we put up on Lady Cliff Park and Memorial Park. Uh, very, very soon this month, very, very soon, we're going to turn them on as we had talked about. We have um, Mother's Day coming up. We have Father's Day coming up. We have O'Neill graduation coming up. We have West Point graduation coming up. And of course, we have our 4th of July. So the lights will come on soon and they'll stay lit till after the 4th of July as a celebration to all those, all those uh, holidays. Um, I want to say something about Senator Larkin. Um, what do you say about Senator Larkin? Uh, I'm glad he's going to retire and that he can spend time with his family, his grandchildren. But they'll never be replaced. Uh, Senator Larkin will never be uh, replaced. I am very proud of our friendship, decades of friendship with that man. Um, you 
you know, in many ways people can call him a hero for all he's done for the, especially for the fire and the police and the, and the ambulance. And it's true, he is a hero. Um, but for me, and I think many others, uh, uh, the senator is a legend. And um, for that, I appreciate our friendship and his friendship with this community. So that's, that's that. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor, if I could just chime in with the, about Mr. Larkin real quick. Absolutely. Um, what he did for the district and the communities, not just our community, but all the communities in the district, is unsurpassed. And uh, I can remember when I was, a long time ago, let's say around seven or eight, uh, pulling the wagon around for one of his first campaigns. And he remembers that. I was just up to uh, Albany uh, last month. And uh, he still remembers that. So he uh, he's definitely a special guy. He's a special guy. That's a good thing to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, so I've said to someone earlier this evening outside before we came in, before I came in, I can talk all I want about being a tourist town. I can talk all I want about what needs to be done. I can talk all I want about the role that West Point plays in this. And West Point does play a role. I can get all the grant money that I can get, and I'm, I'm pretty good at grant money. When you go outside tonight, if you can see around the corner, there's what you're going to see. And it's been there for a week and a half. Okay? Right around the corner. Right around the corner. I don't care if it's down the street. This is right around the corner. It's been like that for a week and a half. Not just today. You're kidding me. <laughs> to our attorney. Now, we, I know we have codes on this. But they're not being, I said this earlier, an hour ago, enforcement. I think when we sit for the code meeting, we're going to find that we have a lot that we sit up here and say, what the heck? I think we have I think we have what we need to enforce. I know we have what it takes to enforce this. Now Jim, if the chamber wants to put up with this, that's a that's your that I think the chamber needs to play a bigger role. Okay? I think codes need to be enforced. Yeah. And the chamber needs to take a bigger role, you know, especially on Main Street. So this is a disgrace. Those are I'm insulted. I'm insulted. That's a chamber member. It'll be addressed. It should be. It should be addressed. It should be addressed even if it isn't a chamber uh, member. Opinion. Um, have we talked to the town? Because those are the town receptacles. Why weren't they empty? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I spoke to them a month ago. A month and a half ago, I spoke to those people, and they said we have no other place to put the. Uh, Receptacles, like a, well, you have to find it. Yeah. Right. You can't I know a right. business. I know a business on Main Street that has a dumpster, and I tell you what. For 13 years, I had to pull that dumpster up a hill, through snow, rain, who cares? But snow, ice, to get it to Main Street. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter where. I can tell you afterwards. And we did it. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. And Mr. Mayor, just so you know, this particular garbage uh, issue, um, back when Mrs. Greenberg had that property, I think she had a location where she kept that garbage. And I'm going to hazard to guess, she was just as busy as this establishment. So um, it's something that I know the planning board previous and the one now definitely looks into with any new establishments that come before them um, that where they're going to put their trash receptacles is one of the biggest things that they like to look at. Can we get this gentleman to in the back? Okay. Uh, the, um, the Village Beautification Committee you, you're gonna. You, they've been out. They started to go out there, and they went and bought flowers, and they're putting them in pots, and they're gonna start hanging, hanging them soon. Um, they're doing a wonderful job. Um, um, Olga, are you you 
helping them or doing something along that? Yeah. You're all over. You're everyone. Okay, thank you. So um, you're going to start seeing uh, all this is going to be done before West Point graduation. Um, and I appreciate the Susan Wicks and all of her helpers. There was another lady here before, but she's left. Um, she's a, she's a great volunteer. Um, and uh, now they're talking about uh, putting these on the. Br you, did you see this? Are you part of this? Yeah. Okay. The uh, the um, window. the window boxes for the bridge down here at the corner of a mountain in Maine. Beautiful. I can see it. You know. So um, they're doing that. Um, so a lot of planters are going up. This is. Let's go. I want to commend the, the Little League uh, organization, uh, association. I'm not sure what they call themselves. Uh, this year, their grand opening, they had a nice parade, and all the kids went up there. And uh, everywhere you looked on uh, the 28th, you saw a young young man. And um, I'm here. I hear there's there's a girl involved in the Little League. Um, everywhere you looked that day, you saw a uniform. Um, but I especially want to point out Dimitri Selby. Dimitri Selby, uh, he didn't want any fanfare, or, and I'm sure he didn't want me to speak about him tonight, but I'm going to. He uh, is in real estate, lives here, trying to make the community better. And uh, he went out to some of his clients, uh, some folks that he knows, and um, he got he he was able to uh, get re he was able to receive uh, thousands of dollars for all that work that was done over the little league field. You take a ride over there, you'll see. Yeah, it looks good, great. right? And so uh, I say to the I say to uh, Dimitri, I say to the recreation department, I say to the little league association, whatever you need from the village, DPW guys. You need whatever, brush taken away, more dirt brought in, it doesn't matter. You come to you come to us and we'll provide it. Okay, so I just want to say that, but Dimitri Selby did, did a, a, a lot. On the 16th of June, there's going to be a yard sale. <clears throat> Anything you have that you want to get rid of, we all have those items. Um, uh, rent a table, not rent, you have to bring your own table, but uh, you can have a space down at the parking lot across from Sacred Heart uh, to uh, sell your sell your things, and then uh, the cost of the spot twenty dollars goes to the Fourth of July. The Fourth of July, let's remember, needs thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars we need, and it's tough raising the money before this date because if you get a letter in February or March or April, ah, that's over there. I get to that one. <laughs> so we have like two months to raise thirty thousand dollars. So any help that anyone can give to the Fourth of July, you can mail a check to the Independence Day Committee, PO Box two hundred, Highland Falls, New York. Uh, I'm going to give this out not to read, but uh, this was a department head meeting I had recently, and you'll see uh, it was one of the longer ones that I had, uh, but uh, we got a lot done. And you'll see there. If there's any questions, please, please ask me. They're bullets. They're only bullets. They're not, you know, any more than that. But anything you want to know about this, please. Huh? There's two pages. So this is it. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. Hey. Yes, sir. You uh, waited long enough. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, up here, sir. Mike Gonzalez, I live on 53 on your Park. I, I presented to the mayor uh, photos, a letter from the Andiora Park Association. I don't know if you've been in Andiora. Uh, I live right across the street from the big colonial house that burnt down 15 years ago or so. Well, at this end of the road, and at this end of the road, when it rains, all the water comes down to my yard, 
and then flows to the park in the back. In 13 years that I've lived there, that ground has settled two feet. My driveway is settled in. Uh, I can't plant grass, I can't plant bushes, I can't plant anything because every time it rains, it all washes out to the park. Now the mayor was out there and super the super guy. I, I, highway super. Highway, highway, highway superintendent. They all came out there with umbrellas and at that time that it was raining, there was already eight inches of water and it was a pond. I've had ducks in the pond. He's got, mayor's got the pictures. Ducks. It's on. It's an ongoing. It's, pond. It's, an, it's an ongoing issue. I know it's not my problem. Unfortunately, when they built that development, no drainage systems were ever put in that development. It's a set. It's. I got. A, I got a letter from the board saying that I could run a drain line from the street to the park entrance behind me and run that water into that park. So that way I can plant a, a, a garden, I can plant grass, and I don't have no more settling. Uh, I'd just like to know when or if anything is going to be done so I can maybe plant a garden this year and grass this year. It's a straight run. It's roughly 90 feet. And right now from the street to the back where the pipe will end, it's, it's three foot drop from the street to the back. It's a three foot drop already. And it gets deeper and deeper each year. And uh, it's just, I, I, it's unfortunate that I can't grow anything. If you come to my house, I bought that house 13 years ago. I've done a tremendous a lot of work to that house. And I'd like to keep it going the way it's going. And it's just unfortunate when it rains, it, you could almost put a canoe on there and, and float to the back. The closest drain to my house, 500 feet, to the other end, the other side of the park. And why there's a drain in the bushes, I have no idea. But that's where the closest drain is. But I had gotten permission from the board to run a drain line from the street to the back, because I, I know there's issues with the the town going through there. There's another issue, which I know it's none of your issue either, but I could literally go in my backyard right now and turn the water off to two people across the street from me because I have their mains in my backyard. So if I really don't want to be a nice guy, I mean, <laughs> but I just want to fix this. I just want to get the water out of my yard if possible. The mayor has seen it, it runs down and then when it comes, it comes. It's not slowing down. And, and you can't put a curb there, because if you put a curb there, because all you're going to do is get a puddle. It's not going to go across the street. So... The, the water runs down, and it's a, there, there is a grade, a downward grade. <clears throat> and the way the blacktop was laid, I, I, I mean, I stood there for a long time in the rain watching it. It, it comes down the width of the road. It was really pouring that day it's, we were down. Oh, it's coming down. And it just abruptly makes a right, the width of the road, right into his yard, between, the, between your the two homes. 53 and 57. Right. Like right between our two yards and just beeline. Correct. Um, and you said it a couple minutes ago. You said it a couple of minutes ago. Uh, on the park, they didn't put any drainage in. The north end, they didn't put any. It's a you know, it's, it's they were right. you were allowed to do things back then that you wouldn't be able to get away with now. And uh, the other issue, as you pointed out, is uh, if we were to put a, a, a drain, a drop drain, so the water from the road goes down down the drain. There's nowhere to bring the drain. There's nowhere to bring a pipe, unless maybe you were to bring it through another yard and have it flow out towards the river. That would, you know, that would, that would be ten times more than what yeah, it is now. Yeah, yeah. So, sir, um, I have your pictures downstairs on my desk, and uh, they show it quite clearly. Um, I will show it. I'm going to show it to the board. Uh, even though uh, we, I've been having uh, a few.
four or five discussions with <coughs> continued discussions with the highway superintendent and um, the engineer so my plan was is to bring the engineer down we have a lot of projects going on that we need the engineer I mentioned a couple of them tonight so he's coming down this week and next week we I know you're retired I think and so um, we'll be down there um, so I have two I have I think I have two things to figure out the board uh, what we think is the best way to remedy the problem but maybe even before that is it our problem and don't please don't take that that wrong well it appears to me when I first saw it but I just have to be well of, you know I just it, want to be honest I understand with you. what you're saying but when it rains that water shouldn't be going through my property it's not really my water and I mean I could dig a hole and put it right there in the sewer line no, I understand I mean I understand you know, I have no problem. Don't, with don't that take that comment wrong. Well, no, I understand what you're saying, but like you said to me too originally, that is our water that's running through your property. Yeah, in in general, if, I don't know if that's the correct way to put it, but we cannot put water from a village street or a village whatever. Well, it's not so much the village. It's if water is running off someone else's right property A. Right changes the drainage so that it runs on a property B. That's property A's problem. That's a different and it's story. a trust. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. So you can't divert water from your property exactly. to your neighbor's property. So that's why when it, when when developers get approvals, and I don't know when this happened, they're not allowed to increase stormwater runoff. That's why they have to put in drainage systems. Mm -hmm. This was development was a way 50, before anybody thought 50s, about that unfortunately 52. can i ask a quick question sure. um you said it goes to a drain in the center of the park no now? what it is is that if you pull into on your park mm -hmm. the water that's there go goes straight ahead mm -hmm. and then it drains to the park it's a runoff i guess it was like a runoff that pro that no, water no, no, yeah. and then and then the water that goes around this way mm -hmm goes around and it continues around the road and it comes down to my mm -hmm. property right. then the water that goes that way goes around there's two drains on that curve going around there's one in front of uh isn't there one in front of vanzetta's vanzetta's house and one just before vanzetta's house then after that there's nothing the entire way around. sir that water that comes over towards you comes from the state road yes and uh yes Go, so what happens is it goes you, through shades it goes come, through when, yeah when you come in on your park and you go to the left and you go to that first big left right turn mm -hmm. all that water is okay, on that, the top he's of the over hill. where you live I, I all understand. that water comes straight down that road along the left side of the road gets to where my house is in 57 is and banks into the banks to in, the right straight to, into the, the, center. Into right. to the center of our and, and i understand because there's an old well i don't even know if the ball field's still in there now well, there used to be a ball field there when I was a little yes, kid. Yes. Anyway, so with that being said, that's why I asked the question: Is there a drain in that field now, or is that what turns yes. into the pond? You know where the remember where the backstop was? Yes. That drain, if I'm facing the backstop, that drain is to the left in the bushes mm -hmm. where you make that bend. When you go to the right and you make the bend, mm -hmm. the first bend. There's a big gray house right there. Mm -hmm. That drain is in behind is behind that house. So it has to go all the way to there. Right. But what happens now is every time it rains, between the rain, the snow, and the ice and everything, it goes into that park, it sits in there, and then it settles in the, right. in the ground. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the drain is not working or the water the, the drain's in the wrong spot. Uh, okay. It's not in the lowest right. portion. So unfortunately it has to infiltrate through the field. Or when it rains, pond. Right. I and I'm just hazarding the guess because I was not down there. Okay. I mean, I was just looking for a solution, a eight-inch pipe or six-inch pipe from the front to the back, and and out. You know, put a grill on it so the kids can't play in it. Right. And it'll run freely into the park. I already got a letter from the president the, of the, the park. And they're okay with okay. it dissipating into the park. Yes, sir. That's where it all goes now. I have that letter. Yes. I have that. Letter. Okay. Okay, That's so I'm not I'm not 
believe me, I'm not brushing you off. We're, we're looking at it. We're going to talk about it and make a re and make a decision. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Olga. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Um, Olga Anderson, resident of Highland Falls. Um, as you all are probably aware, um, the Orange County Executive um, is working with the County Planning Department on a shared services initiative. And um, the state has mandated this um, as a way of looking at lowering property taxes, which I'm sure we are all in favor of. So uh, that, um, sh uh, that panel that meets around the shared services um, is going to be issuing a um, draft report in July. Uh, it's going to go to the county legislature and then it's going to go through several other um, iterations of review and input, et cetera, et cetera. So I know that all of the municipalities in the county are uh, participating on that panel. So um, I'm just wondering what the village of Highland Falls has um, planned to submit as a possible shared services to go towards that plan. Because there's, the state will, will match any savings that we can come up with with shared savings, with uh, shared services, plus there's some additional tax incentives on top of that. So I'm uh, really hoping that you know we can submit something on behalf of the village to that overall county plan. Uh, Olga, I have been getting several, many, whatever the word might be, uh, emails from the county on this issue. Um, I have been, I have it downstairs. It's, I say girl, she, Nicole. young person. Nicole I think Anderson. it is Nicole. <laughs> I think it is her, Nicole. I've been talking to her by phone and by email. Um, I can give you something uh, once I make sure I'm correct with what I'm saying that my discussions were, with her have been. I can, you know, we're 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 participating. Yeah. I, I I'd have to look downstairs on my computer and to, for more information, you know, to say any more to you. But right. yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the shared services would be between two entities. Yeah. So we I'm, probably I'm so going to be asking the same question at the town board meeting prob because it would be, you know, and I know they are looking into it, so I have yeah. no idea and what so, the, it is. Yeah, and, and, so, and so are we. And, and just for, for knowledge, uh, for many years, um, we, the village and the town, have done sh sh shared services. Yeah, we've done some uh, services. Whenever we can. Uh, it might not be a, a hoopaloo or anything like that, but they help us with uh, they help us with black topping. Uh, we help them with uh, road crews. Uh, um, uh, recently, uh, we uh, shared their bucket truck to put these banners and flags up because they have a bucket truck. Truck we don't. So we're, we're doing shared services. I would I, I would assume more than probably people realize. So yeah. Well, there's, now, there's I haven't gotten any money from the county yet. No, well, it, <laughs> this will be all going towards this one big project, and and it, it can be done with another municipality. There's also a possibility to share services with the county. Hmm. I think some of the 911 stuff is yeah. related. No, to you're the you're not all, you're not off base. And um, so anything that we can do to squeeze out. And some of the costs of living in this area would be uh, beneficial. Uh, uh, Olga, uh, just give me one second. Olga, we uh, we have even uh, had, uh, in my term as mayor, uh, I don't know about anything other than that, but we have had county uh, dumps, dump trucks over here helping us. Uh, we've had a couple bridges. This is major money, major money that we didn't have to go out and bond. Uh, come over and help us with their engineer, the county engineer, uh, for uh, bridges. Uh, uh, Eagle Valley Bridge was done that way and others, but I'm, I, could, I remember Eagle Valley Bridge where Merv lives. So we've been doing this. Listen, if I can, if I... I it's just the truth. If I can go, I say I'll drive to Albany and get a thousand dollars. I'll drive to Goshen to get a dollar. 
Well, I'm just letting you know. No, I do it every chance I can. So we've been doing this. Well, if we can document any yes, additional maybe, yes. shared services that can result in cost You're right. savings, You're then right. we can get matching funds um, based on estimated you know, savings. And I was looking at a study that was done by Seneca Falls, total population 6,000. They reduced their taxes by 48 percent by doing whatever they did, uh, but really tackling this mm -hmm. issue. That is so significant You're right. that um, we can't, I, I don't think, miss this opportunity to try to do something yeah. like that. I think well. the initiative, I think you hit it, the, the initiative that they're doing now is something that we and other communities have been doing. But we need to document it now to get into some type of program where maybe there's some savings or money given right. to us for that, our, that, for for yeah. our efforts. Yeah, so. if you've been doing things that oh, aren't have. that aren't on the books, then well, we, we get them on the books yeah. and and we start moving in that direction. Correct. 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 Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Martha Allward Highland. I don't look at that paper, but go ahead. House. Five bedrooms. Historic house. On the market right now in Nyack for $1,350. Beautiful. A little pricey. A little pricey. It is historic. The significant thing is the taxes on this house are a little bit more than two times what I'm paying for 50 by 100 foot, 133 year old house. Maybe the answer partners with Olga's statement. Consolidation. I've been here 17 years. It's this word that floats around. We can't pay for two forms of government. If joining up, dissolving the village, and forming a big town of whatever you want to call it, if it saves us each a hundred dollars a year for ten years, I've been here seventeen. I'm not saving anything. It's it's not a bad idea. It will take people about five years once it happens to get used to it and forget it was any other way. To quote you in the I'll paper, the, I'll tell you that paper I'm of the sure high, you know. town of the Highlands, the twentieth, and you were talking about. Uh, Village explores problems with derelict properties. Right. And you said, if it's a town-wide building department, why is it not the town's engineer, town's attorney that handles these? Imagine if the town handled everything, and we only had one form of government to deal with, well, and we each I saved $100 a year. I don't want them handling <laughs> everything like they do the building department. Uh, no, I would like... And that can be I my would, opinion. I would love to see the building department change because the grief they have been giving a new business trying yeah, to come know. into this community is horrible. You want people to come in. That's one example that's, of many. Oh no, I, I know. I was cited for uh, a lilac bush that was hanging over the street, which I took care of after I found out which bush they were talking about only to let them know it's not my lilac bush. Well, I'm, so, gonna go, I'm, yeah. gonna go, I'm sorry. I'm mm. going to just put a little different thing. You, what you cited, is, I stand by that. If it's mm. a town-wide building department, yeah. then why are we using our engineer? Why are yeah. we using our... Wait a minute, I'm, exactly. this is going to be quick. Why are we using our engineer? Why do we have to go down there, and I'm going to use this word, and beg, For and beg. Why do we have to go down there tomorrow morning and show them that picture of out here? Are you are you serious? So, and I stand by the article. I, I yeah I, I agree, but I think a, a town of approximately six thousand people doesn't need two forms of government. I mean, well, I, I, it's, I, I, I know I know I yeah, yeah um, someday we have a couple yeah um, you know there are a lot of things I think they're making progress with the derelict buildings here. I mean, there's one on our street that's been rehabbed. Yes, you know, but, and, but that's, that one part of that is thank you to your husband and you, okay? We shouldn't have to fight to get these things done. If we have to fight to get these things done, that's a shame. That's a shame. I'm doing my job. He's yeah. doing his job. She's doing her job. I don't think anybody can point a finger that uh, they're not it, doing their jobs. No, but it's but just they're not it's doing too the job. It's, no, they are not. 
they are not. And, All right. And I've seen, and I'm not. Did I have to come up with the list for 65 cars? Me? Yeah. That's not my job. Another thing with the building department, and I won't mention what they were examining, and they passed it. I, I have 20 years construction experience before I moved up here. What they and, and I don't know what engineers know. You have and, 30 seconds. Well, give me 30 they, seconds. They they passed a building, a commercial type building that I wouldn't let people stay in. Here? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not yeah, I just I, want I, it I here. Yeah. I don't want nowhere. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. In, in Highland Falls. Yeah. And I, I wonder what the yeah. credentials are. That allow that to I don't disagree with you. But you know, just just to add on in that paper that you have in your hand there. Um, you know, we're talking about the buildings and everything else. Well, I also read an article in that paper too that somebody mentioned about the roads too. And I and I have to tell you, I, I just can't believe when you get off 9W and you enter into Highland Falls, how pathetic that road is right now to drive down. And you know. You, you really think about it. Here we are next to a worldwide famous West Point Military Academy, and you're driving down a road like this right now. But and what, losing your tires. But let me finish, though. What bothers me the most about all of this, about bothers me the most, that road will sit like that right before graduation, and then it'll be patched up. It's going to get done in a week and a half. But why does it take graduation for that to get patched up? Well, and what know, that means... Because we know who's important. But, but what bothers me the most, though, what bothers me the most, though, is that road, I can't believe more people aren't complaining about that. Because when you drive down, I'll tell you right now, nobody drives down their lane on that road anymore. You'd be a fool to listen, do that. Listen, some, a police officer, this is a true story, not a funny story. A police officer stops someone driving their car north, right out here on, on West Point Highway, because they thought they were drunk. They weren't they were drunk. Avoiding the they were avoiding the potholes. But look at it this way. I mean, if, you, if the road was patched, you'd make more in speeding, please. <laughs> but, all right, let me, let me follow up uh, uh, on uh, what Merv just said. I want to echo it. I want folks to know that West Point Highway, which is really Blake's Highway, over there, that goes past Ladycliff and goes all the way down to the Ambulance Corps. You got it? Tear gate, all the way down to the, past on to Park. That is a state road. State road. Again, I'm, I'm repeating you, and I don't, I, it's, I'm gonna do it. You're right. West Point, no one loves more than West Point than me, for certain reasons. I love West Point for many different reasons, but shame on them, shame on them. West Point, premier in the world, not the country, not New York State, in the world. Has those, has those roads looking like that? Right to their gate, right to their front door. But, but I've lived here all my life. All that has to happen is West Point called DOT. Those roads will be done before the phone hangs up. Believe me, I'm telling you the truth. And look at those roads. And he's absolutely right. That'll get done before West Point graduation. It's like the grass up here at Stony Lonesome. It gets this high. They do it before the first football game. I know. I've lived through all my life. I can see. My, my eyesight's not gone yet. Okay? That's a shame. People hit those holes. They're not even holes. They're craters. And they think the village of Holland Falls is rough. See, that's 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 the point too. Though. It's not Holland Falls, Mayor. It's DOT the, and West Point. Mayor, that's the point because your presence of driving in here, your first impression is, "Wow, when are they going to fix the roads around here?" And they do not think that it's the state. But I don't want the roads to overshadow my ideas. They kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a stump. I'm not that a stump. Nah, you're not a stump. The word's still not. I'm not Italian either. <laughs> By the way, I also don't want those raccoons here. I, I, I agree. You know, I, I agree. I, I said I can't believe I'm doing this. You got to be careful. I agree. They can relocate. They can relocate. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes. So, uh, good evening, Jim Marlin, Highland Falls. Uh, two points. One, to Merv's point, it is a real shame that a federal entity 
has the influence over state uh, assets and not a state entity. We're state taxpayers. There's not a single person at West Point that pays New York state tax unless they happen to be a New York state resident. Uh, and so if it can take West Point to pick up the phone and not our mayor or our town supervisor or one of our elected officials to be able to get those things taken care of, it just goes again to the impression. I hear time and time again people coming in visiting West Point. Uh, it's, you know, what's going on with Highland Falls? Look at the roads. Look at this. We may know it's a state road. That's not what everyone else is looking at. That's what new, new businesses are thinking about, anyone else who's coming into the area. So, you know, so it's, it's enough said as far as that. Secondly, on the shared services, to Olga's point, I think it would be nice to know if, in fact, we need to show documentation to the county about what shared services are. I think it would be good to know when will that documentation be prepared and be submitted. Uh, you know, perhaps at the next village board meeting in a couple weeks, we can get a report from the mayor, from whoever's taking the action on the board, in terms of what is fought, what is happening with that. When is that documentation going to be submitted? Because if I heard correctly, in July is when the cutoff is. July is the first draft. Right? Okay, so so there may be a need for some kind of plan. My suggestion, some kind of plan put in place with milestones so that we don't find out in July forgot to pull it off my uh, my laptop or get to the young lady downstairs whoever the case might be with that because it is money that is going to come back to us uh, relative in visiting this week a relative of mine lives in California another tremendously high tax state as we all know his property taxes less than half of what my property taxes are uh, for a piece of property that is significantly more value, valuable than mine. So at any rate, to your all point, we need to look at things besides keeping under the tax cap and again going into more debt with bond issues, which I hear we have now done for the wastewater treatment plant. And so the third piece, and I know I'm running out of time, it would be interesting to know what other unfunded mandates the board has in mind that they're going to be bonding this year so that we as the public are aware of what the impacts and what the additional debt that the village is going to go into. Thank you. And number one, the village is always apprised of any uh, projects, infrastructure projects, most of them are infrastructure projects uh, that we do way ahead of time. This ha Tonight was not the first night that wastewater treatment plant was, was brought up. Number two, uh, Mr. Howard says this to me all, all, all the time. Many times he has said this to me. Infrastructure. I don't want to start anything, but somebody tell me the last infrastructure project that was done in this village. Yeah, you know when you would go back to? Last time I was mayor. Okay? Now four more years went by. These projects at the wastewater treatment plant should have been done. Okay, so be, let's let's be careful. What we're not, excuse me. Let's be careful what we're throwing out there and how we're what we're saying. The words we're using. Anyone can come in and pick up this engineer's report on what's wrong with the sewer plant. Now, if you all want me to have the sewer plant, just stop. I'm not going to do it. If you all want me to open up something down there and and, and have raw sewage, like West Point does, go out into the river. I'm not going to do it. That's what's happening here. That, that's what, why this has to be done. You're welcome to come in here and ask for a copy of this, sit in the conference room and read it, and then at the end, you tell me. Then go down to the sewer plant if you want, and then come back and tell me what doesn't have to be done. I didn't make this list up. I wouldn't know how to make this list up. So, so things have to be done, just like at your house just like at your house the roof you know I, I, I had to replace some, a, a pipe in my bathroom I got a whole new bathroom because it's old because my bathroom is old my house is old it goes back to 1925 that's when these pipes go back down on the York Park 1925 some of them the, you well, I don't care if this is a village or a town or a super village a city 
I don't care what you want to call it. These ha this has to be done. Two point two million. I can't. I would never be allowed to hold the taxpayers' money up of two point two million dollars. And then, and then you want to, and then you want shared services. <laughs> that has nothing to do with this. This has nothing to do with the job. And then you want to talk about. Excuse me. You want to talk about the tax cut a cap. Well, I mean, you want me to hide, you you want me to bring put 2.2 million dollars of taxpayers money to do this job when we didn't know it was some of the some of it we didn't know it was broke some of it we knew and the past administration knew mayor could i uh, yeah, yeah. but the, you want to talk about the tax cap you want to talk about lowering taxes and you want me to take 2.2 million dollars of your money i don't think so it doesn't work that way it can't work that way so that that's not realistic Go ahead, Charlie. Um, the bond. Excuse me. Uh, you're, you're you're mixing apples and oranges, Jim. Jim, Jim I'm Jim, surprised. One, one thing oh, on yeah. the yeah, on, you are on infrastructure projects. How do you not? Sure, maybe you this, can maybe you can teach it. Yeah, I don't know. This particular project <laughs> has a 40-year life. Um, that is very appropriate to bond because you bond it over the life of the the infrastructure improvement so people in the future who are benefiting from it are helping to pay for it. The other thing that you've got to keep in mind on some of these projects, um, I used to be on the board of the Environmental Facilities Corporation. Um, we don't know yet if we will be able to get a low or no interest uh, loan. Uh, there are things in the works that could reduce that amount in terms of the impact to this village. Um, that said, the impact of a 2.2 wastewater treatment plant is a whole lot more justified in my mind than a $2.2 million artificial turf um, at the school, but that's just my opinion. Um, I, I, I fully support the improvements at the school for um, science and and maybe one field but I'm getting off track um, and I totally support <laughs> and I would hope all of you do too any infrastructure that has to be done and let's bring up another point Charlie that you've been involved in uh, with me and even the, the, all the board members so everyone knows this the census the federal census that take place every 10 years 2000 2010 they're coming up 2020 10 years before that all the time it the the uh, what do we call it the uh, medium. Me, medium income has a lot to do with the village of Holland Falls and every town and every village whether you get low interest grants to 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 uh, low interest grants to, to low interest uh, loans uh, by the medium income of your community so what does the federal government do? And we're fighting it. We're fighting it. And it's going to take, a, I'm telling you, it's going to take a decade to get it straightened out. You know who they figure into our medium income? The Village of Holland Falls? West Point. Isn't now, does anyone, now does anyone, does anyone think that's fair? Does anyone at home think that's fair? Right we're, now. we're struggling to get grants, and we can't get them. The median no. household income that they're reporting is now eighty thousand dollars, which is and we're not. Certain. That does not fit us. Um, now, now West Point sits there and does nothing about it. I've talked to them, so that's okay. I'm going to Julebrand and Schumer. Now, that's my that's my recourse. Okay, it's not Schoolfus and, and Larkin. It's it's these other two. And it's we've, wrong. We've been to them before, and they sort of throw their hands up After and say they can't do anything. We went to. The woman said, well, I know that it's a mistake. And we said, when well, can you rectify it? What did she give us, five years, ten years? They haven't changed it. Well, it won't really change until this next right. census. But they didn't make they, they, If they we can mistake. get it to change. If we can, yeah. But they're not doing it. Um, no, it's wrong. Uh, well, I've sort of made this plea before. When the census takes place, 
it's imperative that everyone participate because what's happening is obviously the upper income people in the community are sending in their forms and we're not capturing people it does not matter even if people are here illegally <laughs> they need to respond to the census well they don't have to report right. if their their status just right, report I'm gonna, their income charlie <laughs> i appreciate it. i'm glad that you i'm glad that you chimed in on this so the last thing i'm going to say and i'm going to ask for a motion to to adjourn oh, that's tough okay to say that we're not good stewards, this village board is not good stewards of the village taxpayer's money, is totally, totally incorrect. Um, uh, this morning, uh, the village clerk heard me say, I'll come get it. I'll go anywhere. I know you're getting tired of hearing that, but I, I, I really don't care. Uh, I love this village like everyone else does that's sitting up. Otherwise, I don't know why you'd be sitting up here. Uh, it's 9.30 at night. Uh, um, We are, let me look in that TV camera. This board, all five, you have the time we put in to do this budget. I'm very proud of. We should have, and we did. And we came up with a good budget. We cannot prepare. We cannot prepare for the unforeseen. Large projects in the sewer plant, in the water plant, in the highway department. We do the best that we can. We have our department heads we meet with them a dozen times before we start the budget. We want to know, because they have, the, they have the, the knowledge. There's bad water lines down in Ond Ondura Park. They were built in 1925. The sewer plant should have been fixed uh, five years ago. I told them. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my, go ask anyone you want. This is true stuff. Now it's broke. And now I'm here. And now I'm going to fix it. You know, you can like me or dislike me. It, that doesn't matter. I'm going to make the village of Holland Falls the best that I can. And I'll spend the money that needs to be spent, if it needs to be spent, with the authority of these four people. I don't spend this money by myself. If you have a question about the projects we're doing, the roads we're paving, they're in the paper before time, before we do it. Come. Come to any of us. Come to any of us. Why are you doing that road? Last year we did six or seven roads. I mean, they were like that highway over there. Now there's like five or six more. Before last year when I did these roads, when was the last time a road was done? I know, I'm not going to tell you, but I know. You got to do the roads. Look at some of these roads. Look at Prospect. Look at Sweezy. Look at Mearns Avenue. I bet, who, who's been up to Mearns Avenue? Anybody in the last couple months? Go up to Mearns Avenue, and you're going to wonder one thing right away. Why aren't every chair in this room filled by the people who live on Mearns Avenue? Now, we're not supposed to do that? We're not supposed to pay attention to those people? They don't pay taxes? That road should have been done five years ago. I had a five-year plan to pave every street in the village of Holland Falls. I did four. I did four of those years, and I'm proud of it. My street's okay. Why should my street be okay? <laughs> Mearns Avenue? I don't even know how you describe it. But yet we're not, but yet. We're, four wheel drive. We're, we're not supposed to do it. But we're not supposed to do it. We're supposed to be saving all the money to do these streets in one or two years. I can tell you, I say this to the taxpayers, I'll never take your money like that. You have something. Yeah, so um, I can calm down. Just, just so the taxpayers know, and, and this is my take on it. I mean, we pay taxes here because we as taxpayers expect this board to be good stewards of that money. And good stewards of that money look at the infrastructure. So paying your taxes is like an investment. When you invest with these taxes, it should be utilized on improving the infrastructure. So when you do go to sell your house, you don't live on a street like Mearns Avenue where you bought a house and now it's worth less because when somebody drives down that street, they need four-wheel drive. 
Um, Row Park. It, 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 and it's a difficult task. Um, but I believe that when we spend the tax dollars, that they should be going to improve the streets and sidewalks here in the village for the residents as an investment in your property. That's my take on it. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. But I do have a couple of quick other things. Um, I have a water quality improvement project grant and some engineering planning applications that are being accepted We've got that these. I would mm -hmm, that that I would make uh, like to give to you, Mr. Mayor, yeah, like to, to give to our grant uh, person. Um, we have till July 27th to take a look at this and see if it would be applicable to some of our projects, and hopefully it would be. Um, so uh, if we could just please get that out there, um, I think it'd be great. Uh, just so everybody knows that this is uh, the annual Water Week, um, if you, and I know I was not supposed to go on, so I waited a month to the DEC website, Mr. Mayor. But uh, the DEC website has a lot of good information about water quality projects out there um, and uh, how you can save water. Because, um, you know, it's not only our uh, water that we're saving, it's your kids' water. Uh, there's another uh, great program out there. This is the Orange County Annual Compost Bin and Rain Barrel Sale. So, again, this is Earth Day. It's an International Compost Awareness Week. It started uh, yesterday. goes through the whole week. Um, Orange County is offering these bins for sale at half price. So if you go on to the county's website, um, here are some of the different bins that they have. Uh, this one is exceptionally uh, well. Um, it can decrease our garbage that's going into the landfills and it can save on our taxes because the less we have to pay for tipping fees and the more we can compost, the more we're, we are doing as a community to save taxes. <laughs> so if you go on their website, if you can't find it, just get in touch with me. I can uh, give you the link. Um, but I have a lot more here, but it's late and I'll save it for the next meeting. Thank you. And the last thing, and now I want a motion to adjourn. We're applying, we're applying again for the $10 million uh, Main Street grant. Uh, last year we were, I, I, I would say we were, we were one of the finalists. So um, has to be. They, the state is never real kind with deadlines. They tell you a couple of days ago. This that's always been like this. It's due by June one. So you don't have a lot of time with these with the state grants. You know that, Charlie. But uh, we have last year's that'll help us. And I have a couple of people. Uh, I have to call um, Barbara. Barbara, and I have a, a a graduate of West Point from uh, 08. So he's it's a new friend, and I'm using him. So okay. Okay, make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion, motion on that, Joe. Jeez. Second. <laughs> Second. Um, Second. I'll make a motion on that. Are we all? Sure. No one. I'll make a motion on that, Joe. I'll make a motion. Are we all? Oh, God.